Hi, I'm Dick Eit with Bites by Eit. We cater to the exceptional clientele. We work in Manhattan, Greenwich, Nantucket. We go down to Florida, the Boca Raton, Vero Beach, and we're based in Atlanta, Georgia. And we make fantastic food, restaurant quality, and we can show you how to make it for you, your family, and friends. What we're doing today are fan favorites, exceptional bites. So let's get started. We're gonna do uh, two appetizers. The first one is a lobster on a grilled baguette that's been brushed with extra virgin olive oil, sea salt and pepper. And then we're gonna add sliced tomatoes, guacamole, salsa, and put it on a French bread and cut it into bite-sized pieces. The second appetizer is going to be a barbecued chicken served on a ciabatta bread. It'll be a little bit sweet. We'll use a sweet raised barbecue and ketchup, no hot seasonings. And so let's get started. First, we're gonna cut the lobster tails with some uh, shearing scissors. And just along the edges, we'll cut them. These are uh, three and a half ounce lobster tails. We cut them along the sides, pull this out, and then the meat comes out quite easily. At the end, we're just gonna wiggle it a little bit. And there we have a lobster tail. We're gonna end up sauteing these in butter. Uh, we'll use a, a, a slow saute, because we don't want this meat to turn hard and rubbery, so we do it at a, a low to medium heat. Won't add any uh, spices to it at this point in time. And we'll use uh, sweet cream butter for this. Here comes number two. There we go. And we'll do one more. I like using the, uh, these lobster tails. They're frozen. They can last. You don't have to worry about using fresh product. And they turn out quite nicely. So we're going to saute these in butter. I'll use one stick of butter. I could have used a second stick, but I think one is, is plenty to use. We'll let that melt, and uh, then I'll turn down the heat. In the meantime, I'll cut some tomatoes. These are vine-ripened tomatoes. You can use aroma tomatoes in the summertime. You can use uh, a nice Jersey beefsteak tomato, just as long as they're ripe, because this is a, a good part of the ingredients. Um, when I do this for my clients, uh, it is a, a fan favorite. It's easy to do. They all recognize it and they all go excited once they see the lobster and taste the lobster. I like cutting these into slices. Again, like how I do my flatbreads. So it's a pretty good size to it. So it's pretty good thickness to it. I don't uh, necessarily like to dice it. So when they bite into it, they get a nice piece of the, uh, of the lobster and the tomato and then we'll add the guacamole and the salsa. So it's got a nice, a nice flavor to it. It's a little bit of a bite to it. The lobster doesn't have that much flavor to it, so we want to spice it up with some other items. And then on the bread, this bread, a uh, simple baguette, is I've had clients say, oh my God, Dick, uh, how do you make the bread? And it's like, well, it's not that hard to do. You take the bread, you slice it, And then we're going to add, we're going to brush olive oil onto it and sea salt and pepper and put it on the grill. I use this when I do cheese boards. I do this as a, a side for soups, uh, a side for an entree. It really is a, uh, uh, an awesome item. I can hear my butter cooking away. So let's turn down the heat. And then we'll put the lobsters in. So for the um, olive oil, I sprinkle it on here and then I take a brush and move it around. Once I get one side covered, 
And you want to make sure that you also get all the edges to it because you don't want it to burn. So you cover it pretty well on the first side. Don't do the second side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smash down the, the bread from the top side down to the bottom side. So take it, match it up, and just squish it down with your hands. Good workout. So that was the top of the bread, and that's the bottom of the bread. So it's pretty well covered. I'll come over with a little bit more olive oil and brush it on there. I don't want to put too much olive oil on it. I don't want it too saturated, but I want it so it does not burn. So just brush it there nicely, and now we have our bread ready to go. Again, we'll put uh, pepper. I use the helicopter method so I don't get big clumps of pepper or salt on it. So I do it from up high. There we go for that. Again, the helicopter with the salt. And there we go. Okay. So this is ready to go and we can put it on the grill. So here we go. So put the baguettes on there. It's nice and hot. As you're doing this, you're going to watch the edges of it. Uh, it's sort of like making toast. You don't want it to burn too much. You want a little bit of char, which you will get. Uh, it will look nice. It will be crunchy on the top. It will be crunchy on the bottom. When I do this on the gas grill or this kind of grill, I don't always do it on super high. I do it more on a, a low temperature so it has a chance to uh, cook a little bit, get crispy, and, uh, and not burn. So you can already see some of the marks coming on. And that's only been on for 30 seconds or so. so there is no oil on the bottom side. So therefore, uh, I cook it less on the bottom side. I just want to get a little crispiness. So when you do this, you want to be out there watching it all the time. You don't want to walk away. You want to pay full attention to this. And, and there we go. You can see some nice coloring on that. And some nice coloring on that. Turn it over. And we'll just put it here for another 30 seconds and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we have all of our prep ready to go. We'll take the lobster off of the pan and it should be ready by now. Has great coloring. And look at that. Dredge it a little bit more in the butter. You always need more butter, don't you? There you go. A little more butter. And the last one in butter. It's nice coloring to it. Smells fantastic. And we're good to go. So now we'll dress this. So I like to put a little bit of uh, avocado on there. And with the salsa, it's a good combination. Everyone does avocado and salsa on tortilla chips. You can do it on the, on the bread, it is nice. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also put queso cheese on there. And we'll just spread this on there. You want to spread it on sort of thick so you, you, know, you get a good bite out of it. You get some good flavor. You don't want to skimp on this. And uh, sort of like how we do the flatbreads and the pizzas, we go all the way to the edges. Now, for the lobster, I tend to like to cut it just so into bite-sized pieces. So, again, like we do the flatbreads, everybody gets a bite and they all get a uh, lobster piece, a tomato piece. I'll put on two pieces of the lobster on each piece of uh, tomato. And then I'll sprinkle a little bit of the salsa on top of each. And again, you can use mild salsa if you want a little more heat. You can use a hot one. So you can sort of vary it up. But it will add a little bit of a kick to it. 
So it's a great uh, appetizer. You can also put toothpicks in there to hold it a little bit better. Again, it's sort of a bite-sized piece. If you wanted to make it for an entree, hmm, I don't know if I would. So there's our lobster with guacamole, salsa, and tomato. Here's another great appetizer that we can make. Uh, you could serve as an entree, but I like it as an appetizer. I did a graduation party. I've done uh, rehearsal dinners. I've done uh, all kinds of uh, receptions with this barbecue chicken. It is so simple to make, so easy, and yet so tasty. So, it's barbecue chicken. We'll add chicken stock, uh, ketchup, and I use a, a Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue. A little salt and pepper, and of course I always use extra virgin olive oil, and I like the Colavito. So, here we go. We will season this. Once again, salt and pepper. I'll flip it over. A little more pepper. And salt. And then I'll add the uh, extra virgin olive oil on it. It just gives great flavor. Flip this over. And then I cook it in the Instapot. So it takes, you know, I can do uh, 20 or so uh, chicken breasts on there. I prefer the chicken breast. Sometimes I've done it with chicken thighs. But if you use chicken thighs, yes, it has more flavor. It has the skin on it. But this is a little bit healthier and you don't have to worry about taking it off the bone. So again, it's, uh, it's nice and easy and simple. Put this in. We'll add the ketchup right on top. The barbecue sauce. You can use any kind of barbecue sauce. I just like, since I'm making this as a sweet item, I typically do this with other like a pulled pork or a short ribs, and I do those with a little bit of spice. So I like to have something that's spicy, I like to have something that's sweet, and uh, the short ribs that I do, I use a red wine. So it all has a, a different base. And in order to provide the moisture, and so it cooks, I add the chicken stock. Close it up, put it in, half hour, depending on how many you have in there. It could be an hour. The Instant Pot works so well. It cooks it quickly, and there you go. The last part that we're gonna put in there is we're gonna use a, a ciabatta bread. You could use the baguettes if you wanted to, but I like sort of mixing it up. So, just like how I did the baguettes, I'll put some olive oil on it, mix that around with the brush, I'm gonna take it and dump it and push it down. There we go. Now we have both sides almost done. I'll finish it off, get all the edges, and then we add the uh, salt and pepper to it. Again, from up high, and then we'll add a little sea salt. There we go and then we'll grill it. Again, two minutes on the uh, olive oil side, 30 seconds or so on the other side. There you go. There's a barbecue chicken on a ciabatta bread. The uh, barbecue chicken is out of the Instapot. We're gonna shred it, put a little bit more uh, barbecue sauce, ketchup on there, and we'll plate it, and then we'll plate the lobster. So here we go. So with the chicken, you can either uh, cut it first and then shred it. Just cut it with the grain and then we'll shred it with a fork. I like to do that. It just uh, makes it a little bit easier and quicker. It's cooked nicely. It's nice and tender. And there we go. Okay. Then we can just pull it apart. You can either use a uh, two forks to do it. If it's cooled down, many a time I'll make this ahead of time, the night before I have an event, and put it in the uh, refrigerator, let it cool down, and then I'll pull it out and, uh, and shred it. 
And when I do that, I, I can use this or I can just use my fingers and, and pull it apart that way. It's, uh, I think it adds more flavor when you cook it the night before, the day before, and let it just uh, uh, soak up all of the, the sauce in there. I'll put this back in the bowl, add some more of the sauce, the ketchup, and the barbecue. So if you have a uh, one chicken breast, you know, six to eight ounces, that can serve, especially once you start adding the barbecue and the chicken to it, it can serve uh, three or four people easily. Whenever I do these parties, I always have leftovers and my clients love leftovers. Who doesn't like leftovers? And something like this, a barbecue, it, uh, leftovers are, are quite, uh, they get better the following day. I had a party uh, last week. It was a uh, engagement party and half the people didn't show up because uh, the bride and groom had COVID. So they said, heck, we'll still have the party. We'll still go with it. And they did. And so we had probably 12 pounds of barbecue chicken left, a couple pounds of short ribs left, a couple pounds of pulled pork left. The kids came back from uh, evening of having fun and they ate it all that night. So leftovers are good. So I'll put this back in here, add some more sauce to it, stir it around. Nice barbecue flavor to it and nice chunks. I don't like to shred it up too much, but just enough. I'll put it on the ciabatta bread that we grilled. And I'll cut these in half. And you could cut it into quarters if you wanted to, but I think half, people can pick it up. It's quite nice like that. A little crunch to it. Put on the plate there on the plate there. And there you go, your barbecue. And again with the lobster, we will cut it along the lines of the tomato, in between the tomato, and then we'll cut it again. So there's one cut. I'll now take some toothpicks and just secure it because it will be a little bit wobbly. So there's one and two. And now cut it in between there. So now we have one lobster, two lobsters. We'll do one more. Again, in half, put the toothpicks in all the way down to the bottom so you can feel the, uh, the cutting board. And then cut it and plate it. And I like to serve these items on either an oval, a rectangular board like this. Sometimes I use a, a pizza pallet and, and do it and carry them around. So people know what it is, they're getting it when it's still warm and uh, they can enjoy it. What we did today was a lobster with guacamole, tomato, salsa, and then we did a barbecue chicken on ciabatta bread. So I'd also like to thank our sponsors, Rugged Road Outdoors, which is what we move all our merchandise with to keep it cold. I also use Ziploc bags, religiously, SC Johnson Ziplocs. They're great, you seal it up and nothing ever spills. Many times I do soups and sauces and, and slurry items, and if I use these bags, they're awesome. So I wanna give a shout out to my friend Fisk Johnson of SC Johnson. Calavito extra virgin olive oil, and we can't forget our, our steel, baking steel. We didn't use it today, but it's a great item to have, and uh, it's my favorite item in the kitchen, baking steel. Thank you very much.